<laughs> Man, one of my most favorite bites in the fall is a wake bait bite. I just, you know, it's a bite that, that I can cover water with, but yet it's such a visual bite. It's almost as good as a top water bite, but you know, later in the fall as the water cools off, they don't come up to the surface, but you can still get them to come up, you know, just below the surface and use like a wake bait like this one right here. And that fish got in a battle with a bird. <clears throat> All right. It's so fun to see those fish come up and eat that stuff. Come here, buddy. <laughs> that water's cold. We're not doing much jumping. Not doing much jumping. I really like when I'm choosing a color for this bait, you know, if I only had to choose one, you know, that bone right there, that to me is just a, a, an all time favorite, you know, clear water, muddy water. If you had to choose one, I really like that one. Chunky little bass. You know, another thing I can say about, about this bait, uh, you know, one, it, you always need to have it on a cranking rod uh, and line size. I like 14 pound line. You know, there's some guys that might like bigger line or smaller line, but for me, that bait, acts the best especially the smaller one on 14 pound line I, I said smaller one they make a bigger one uh, that you can get away with like on 17 or 20 pound test but uh you know that smaller one to me is perfect on 14 pound fluorocarbon experiment a little bit when you're out there fishing on the retrieve you know some days you know they may want that thing really really quick you know even if the water's cold it may be like a reaction strike you know like a post front type bite but uh you know most of the time for me it's a, it's a slow retrieve. And by having the lighter line, it, it enables that bait to still have that side to side motion, that, that action in it, because the line is less restricting than a bigger diameter line. And uh, you know, just I can reel it a little slower. Like today, they, they seem to want it fairly slow because the water's so cold. You know, I had a big cold front come through. Uh, you know, they're, they're not overly active on it. of them up there no big ones you know the places i like to throw this bait uh you know today we're throwing it over really shallow grass uh, you know it's a great bait for that like especially right after you've had a rain and you've got all that matted grass out there and the lakes come up two three four inches you know this bait you can keep it above the grass where you know a vibrating jig or spinner bait or or something else would dig down in the grass the instant it hit the water you know, that's one scenario. Another scenario that I really like throwing this bait is shallow flat points. And in particular, big rock flat points. You know, here in Oklahoma, we have a lot of points on a lot of lakes that are just really tapered. Your boat might be sitting in two feet of water, a long cast off the bank. Man, those bass run those shad up on those points in the fall. And it's, this bait works perfect in those scenarios. You know, this bait I'm throwing I would almost consider it a subsurface crankbait. You know, I don't want it to get it confused with a wake bait. Like a wake bait comes across the surface, actually makes a wake. You know, the red fin, the surge shad. Uh, those are really super clear water techniques. Uh, bringing fish up from deeper water a lot of times. You know, this is, is, is just a super, super shallow diving crankbait. Yes, it's called a wake bull, but I'm reeling it four to six inches underneath the surface. I'm not bulging the surface or waking the surface with this bait. That might be a better one. He hit it right when it hit the water. I can't quite tell. Oh yeah, feels like a good one. I'm trying to stop my trolling motor. Stay on there, fish. What do I got? Oh yeah, look at this one. Look at this one. He's got it choked too. And we moved up to the upper end of this lake and uh, back of this pocket. And golly, they're eating it. Eating it. Yes, you can't even see my bait. I love it. I love it. That's when you know you're throwing the right bait. When they have that thing choked down there like that, took us a little while, but come here, buddy. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Yes. Yes, what a nice fish. And I got him hooked. Good. I got to get my pliers, guys. All right, I got him right here. I just want to be super careful. Get it out of there. Hmm. And he engulfed it. One thing else I want to I want to bring up while I'm unhooking this fish is uh, 
don't put too big of hooks on here. You know, it's, it's such a tendency for guys, you know, to put big, heavy hooks on there. What a fish. Beautiful fish. Not a mark on it. Gosh, I, I just love the smell of them. Thank you, bud. You don't want to put too big of hooks on these things. You know, if you do that, it's going to weigh that bait down. It's not going to have the buoyancy. It's not going to have the action. So put smaller hooks on there, or keep the hooks on there. I don't, I'm not saying put smaller hooks on there, but don't put too big of hooks or too heavy of wire hooks. It just completely offsets what this bait is supposed to do. Oh, 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 what do we have? It's got a head shake to it. It's got a head shake to it. I'm gonna back my drag off. Oh yeah, oh yeah, looky here, golly. Golly, it's a big one. I just got him hooked right in the top of the head. Gosh dang it, it's a real big one. One hook, one hook. Oh man, golly. I'll never forget, I wanna tell y'all a story. I will never forget, like this, this style bait to me, I've got fond, fond memories of. Gosh dang it, look at that. One hook right there in the top. What a fish, isn't that beautiful? Thank you, girl. You made my day. It's just a big one. Just a big one that likes to eat a weight bowl. Perfect, perfect. I was trying to tell you a story. Like, I, I just got super fond memories of this thing. Um, in 2002, I won my very first national tournament, $100,000 on this style of bait. I was able to buy my first house uh, with that. And, uh, yeah, I've got very, very fond memories of throwing this bait. That event was in the spring on uh, Lake Eufaula. The, you know, I'd been catching them on a buzz bait the first few days of, of the tournament. And then that final day, they just completely, they just boil on it. They wouldn't eat it. And uh, I switched over to a bait just like this one and uh, won the tournament and bought me a house. Pretty cool.